Is the plane realistic for the New York Knicks? What's going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new video. I hope you guys are all doing well. As you guys know, the New York Knicks folded down the stretch versus the Brooklyn Nets. The Atlanta Hawks have been coming out victorious lately as they, they've been over 500 when it comes to their last 10 games. And a bunch of you guys are probably wondering, is the plan still in play for the New York Knicks? Like, is it really possible? Can the New York Knicks still go on to make that play-in? Mathematically, yes, it is possible for the New York Knicks to go out there and make the play-in. In, in like a realistic point of view, I do not think it's happening when you look at our upcoming schedule and you just really take a look at the standings. The Atlanta Hawks, they bumped up to that ninth seed. So now the 10th seed or that final playing spot goes to the Charlotte Hornets as of right now. And they're 33 and 35. We're going to be going through the schedule together and just being really realistic and even looking through an optimistic point of view like Maybe we could win this game, but we also have to be like, but that's a game we're potentially going to lose. So I'm going to be like talking about both sides of the coin here, just being optimistic, but also keeping it real at the same time. So my first question to you guys is, is the play-in worth it? Yes, it looks cool and all. It looks like we still have this winning culture coming off of making it to the playoffs last year, even though you could say it's underachieving compared to last year. Everyone just talked about how it was overachieving last year. We weren't supposed to be in the position we we're supposed to be, but we had this massive drop off so i understand the people that don't want to make the plan we're missing out on a top lottery pick if it's top six top seven whatever you are looking for when it comes to the draft like we need young talent we got to look towards the future what the plan literally does nothing for us like there's literally reports that julius randall like we're trying to trade him he's not happy fournier he's too inconsistent we don't want him moving forward like yeah we have rg barrett but then we also have these pieces like mitchell robinson we don't even know if we're gonna bring him back like i would be a fan of bringing him back on the right price but it's possible that we make the plan and what does that do for us moving forward most likely we're not making it to the playoffs like you're just gonna have a bunch of guys playing that aren't gonna be here in a few years so and it's gonna trick the front office into thinking that we're a better team than we really are then they're gonna think tom thibodeau still this legit coach or he could overcome adversity with any type of personnel if it's more on the offense side of the basketball than defensive side of the basketball last year like yes he's playing the young guys but I feel like the front office is kind of pushing him to play the young guys we don't know fully what's going on but the front office might think or just they might cover up or the plane might cover up the deficiencies or the bad things Tom Thibodeau has done this year and maybe they're gonna think oh this is the guy moving forward this really is the guy but at the end of the day, yes, I want my team to win basketball games. The playing would be awesome, but how does it benefit a, benefit a, benefit us at all moving forward? Like, it doesn't help us win a championship. Like, what does that... It really doesn't do anything. Wow, we have the experience of going to the plane. Like, I really don't understand it. So I understand both sides of the coin, people's perspective. Just, yeah, we're winning games, but, like, what does... It, it really doesn't do anything, like, for us, because... Uh, most likely we're going to be losing in that plan so looking at the new york knicks upcoming schedule we're the 12th seed and we're a few games out when it comes to making that play-in or just even a, like a little more than a few games out as we're 28 and 40 and like i mentioned the charlotte hornets are 33 and 35 so you take a look at the new york knicks schedule here and what could our schedule or what can our record potentially be when this season is all said and done when it when it's all done after we play all these games. So the Trailblazers is our next game on Wednesday. I do think that's a winnable game. Lately, I've seen Anthony Simons has not been playing. We'll see if he goes on to play Wednesday. But they pretty much bring G League players out there on the floor. It's a bunch of young, inexperienced guys. I know Josh Hart went off lately, or he had a huge game. But they're playing a bunch of young, inexperienced guys. I know we lost to them last time. But they were even playing different personnel back then. And I do think this is a realistic game to win versus the Trailblazers. So let's say we go on to win that game. We go on to play the Washington Wizards. I feel like that can go 50-50. But if we're looking to it with kind of an optimistic point of view, you, you're like, that could be a winnable game. Like the Wizards are kind of inconsistent like us, even though they are better. They are, they're fighting for the playoffs. You got the Jazz. I just don't see us beating them. They're one of the best defensive teams in basketball, one of the best teams in basketball. In general, you got the Atlanta Hawks coming up next. So let's say we take the L here. The Atlanta Hawks are 6-4 and four in their last 10 games. They've really kind of been um, 
yes, they're still inconsistent, but they're starting to win games. You take on the Hornets. Let's just say we find a way to come out victorious. The Miami Heat, we never beat Miami, let's be real. They're one of the most balanced teams in basketball, one of the best coaches, one of the best rosters. They just have a very well-constructed roster. You take on the Pistons. The Pistons, they've been very competitive lately. Let's say this is a close game, but the New York Knicks, they find a way to come out victorious. You take on the Chicago Bulls. I don't think we're winning that game. I think you guys could figure that figure that out yourself. By the way, these are kind of just weird predictions because like you never know in basketball. There, there could be a crazy upset, like a crazy blown lead. Like you never know in basketball games. So most likely I'm not predicting these right. We take on the Hornets. Let's say we lose this time and the Hornets get revenge. They've been kind of falling off a cliff lately. So have we, but you never know. We take on the Orlando Magic. Let's say we actually come out victorious versus the Orlando Magic after losing to them twice this season. So that's a game you're definitely going to have to win. The Nets, I don't see us winning that game. And we take on the Washington Wizards. Let's say they get revenge this time and we take an L. The Raptors are one of the most underrated teams in the Eastern Conference. We take an L there. Just a very well-coached team and just a fantastic team. So you rack up those wins. You put in those losses. You finish with a 33-49 and 49 record. And you know what the Charlotte Hornets record right now is of the 10th seed of like fighting for that plane or in that plane, 33 and 35. So we'll have the same amount of wins as the Charlotte Hornets. Obviously, the Hornets still have games to go. So most likely they're not going to be sticking with 33 wins. So it's just not realistic. It doesn't look like it's going to happen. And even if you say we could beat Toronto, oh, uh, we upset the Nets somehow. Wow, that brings us up to like 35 and like like we end up winning 35 games. We're 35 and 47, but the Hornets, I still think they're going to win more than two games moving forward, even though they're struggling. But at the end of the day, I don't trust this Knicks team to make the play, and I don't trust this team to win basketball games because we're not just inconsistent game by game. We're inconsistent quarter by quarter. Individual players' performances are inconsistent game by game. Evan Fournay could have a great shooting night, then he could be in a slump. Terrible defensively. Alec Burks, you never know what he's going to bring at the point guard position. RJ Barrett, he's been playing solid basketball lately. Or, like, lately he's been kind of, like, slumping or kind of been struggling lately. But he's still young. You never know what kind of game you're going to get from him. We don't have a closer down the stretch. Randall, yes, he's putting up stats, but it's for, like, three quarters of basketball because he doesn't show up in the fourth. Like, we don't have someone that can close out games. We don't. We still don't have consistent shot creators to really rely on. And Tom Thibodeau, you never know what he's going to do with his rotations. Like, there's big-time question marks across the board for the New York Knicks. Let me know down below your thoughts. Do you think it's realistic for the New York Knicks to make the plan? And as always, guys, have a humble day or night. Peace out, y'all.